My name's Daniel. I work for the Northern Territory Parks and Wildlife Commission. And we give a talk every Monday. Um, a little bit about Kalikaru Conservation Reserve, as well as um, uh, day in the life of a park ranger within the parking region. It's of hair made from initiated boys. After they've been initiated, they grab the hair off them and they cut the hair and he made all these belts. And as he's walking through the country, he dropped all these little balls of hair and it formed, formed the Bible, uh, marbles. So it's very funny how the story um, relates when the first settlers came in here and seen the country, they said it's the devil's country. When there's, uh, the other story, the Blackfella story, is um, kind of the same with um, yeah, the black um, the Kuroja man walks through here and um, yeah, he dropped all those turn the marbles into a um, rock, yeah. So it's, yeah, it's Carla Carla, uh, Devil's Marble. Um, the, the reserve, the area itself is very important to uh, four Aboriginal groups. The Alawara, the Warramungu, the Walpuri and the Cuttage. So it's a very important area for them. It, the whole park is about 99% uh, is uh, the whole conservation reserve is a uh, sacred site. So um, yeah, very important to the um, traditional owners around here. The geology. So around, around 1,700 million years ago, uh, the molten magna rose up from the Earth's crust, and as it cooled over time, um, the hard granite rock was formed. And then over time, through wind, um, rain, water, um, erosion occurred, and then slowly the onion effect, as they call it, um, slowly um, eroded onion around and too. forming the circle mm. thing. So, firstly, the, when it first happened, it was um, like the cracks occurred um, diagonally, like a square, and then over time, the wind and water um, just rounded all those boulders over time. So, you know, very important for, it's, uh, for a lot of animals as well. So, a lot of these areas are like a little micro climates as well, um, and little areas where a lot of that like will hold a lot of water. So, a lot of insects and a lot of animals are attracted to these um, boulders and that. So. Um, then we also will get a lot of um, bigger animals like dingoes um, here as well as cats, um, you know, trying to eat the smaller animals as well. So um, there are animals out and about. Um, just this time of the year, it's a bit cooler, um, and there are, a lot of our animals are really, really shy. So um, if you do want to see animals, um, I suggest getting up early. My tip for you is getting up early and getting up and doing the walks way before someone else comes along. Because once you see those animals, um, the next person is obviously not going to see them. You can see them probably long. So that's like 30 million little animals getting killed every day. I'm sorry to the cat lovers out there, but um, as you know, rangers we don't like them. Um, as soon as we see them, we destroy them. Um, so they're really bad for the environment. Sorry? Relocate. Ah, oh, snakes about. Especially mm. now, even if it's cold, always pick their snakes about. Uh, especially at night, always you know carry a torch um, and wear trousers and wear shoes. A lot of our snakes have very small fangs. And they say that it's very hard for them to penetrate through your through your trousers or your pants, and it's less likely you get them bit. I um, heard a story in Alice. Uh, a fella um, passed away. He um, he went walked across his lawn to the shed to grab something, and he walked back, uh, went to bed, didn't wake up. And he was bitten in the leg, and he didn't even know about it because it was the prick was so light. Yeah. So it's just what I say is yeah, just wear shoes and wear trousers. But snakes, we have. Oh, we have these snakes around here. The most common you'll probably see is um, this time of the year we get um, the bigger, bigger snakes, uh, probably the king brown, mm. is our most venomous snake. Mm. Um, they, we, it's actually part of the black snake family, we call them mulga snakes here. Just a couple of weeks ago, we, um, John came across two big snakes just over in the Dayus area, and they were wrapping each other around, trying to mm. knock each other down. Um, and they were at least two meters long. Both of them. They were big, big, big snakes, and they can get bigger as well. I've heard um, the one in the reptile center is about two and a half. I don't know what they're feeding it. Must be some steroids yeah. or something, but it's a, <laughs> it's a big snake. So um, yeah, and look, and that's just like if you yeah if you get bitten, obviously you know you do the bandage, wrap it around. But I've got a bit of a story. Um, a long time ago, like um, snakes, you know, with Aboriginal people. Uh, really, really scared of snakes because usually you associate snakes with death. Because a long time ago there was no antivenom. You know, if you yeah. got bitten, yeah. you know, you're going to die. But what they did was, um, for the old people, what they would do, if someone got bitten, what they would do is they'd dig a hole, a long hole, and they would lay the person in it. And they'd bury him up to his head and just lay him there. Um, so 
So what they do is just like a compression bandage, is just to stop the um, the flow of the venom to coming through from the body. And then you would lay there, and then you know if you if you survived, you know you got up and you got out. If you didn't, all they had to do was just dig a hole for your head. <laughs> <laughs> that's just a funny story, but that's yeah, that's what they actually did. Um, yeah, so um, that's what um, you know, the old people used to do. To and it's just like a compression bandage. It's just stopping the venom from traveling up into your major arteries and you know and things like that as well. So. Um, yeah, and we, yeah, there's about, we have about three pythons around here. We have the black-headed python, the Stimson's python, and the common carpet python here around here as well. Mm -hmm. And then there's, yeah, a whole heap of different snakes we have around here with the western brown. Um, we have the, also have the eastern brown here. And, yeah, the wildest snake, obviously, is, yeah, pretty common around here. Are they active at night? They are active at night. And... Um, the bigger body snakes as well, because they're a bit bigger, they can actually handle the cold a bit more. And um, they might be basking in the sun during the day, and then um, they'll get them warm enough to get out and about. And especially if you guys are travelling up north, um, it gets a bit warmer up there, and snakes are out and about all the time. So just be mindful of that as well. Um, yeah. Um, we also get uh, printies here, around here. I don't know if anyone's heard about a printy. The printies are um, Australia's largest lizard. And they get to or about two and a half meters. Mm. They're the big, biggest lizard. I think they're third, third or fourth behind a couple of um, monitors, like the Komodo dragons, obviously the biggest. And there's one in Asia and Africa that are a bit bigger. Mm. But the printies are um, actually our biggest lizard, and it's probably um, one of our top predators around here. Um, once they get to you know two and a half meters, the only um, animal they have to worry about is human. Um, uh, people like eating them, uh, so they're good meat as well. Um, but yeah, like the printy is actually very important around here. And then we've got the sand goanna. The printy, the printy itself is actually, they've, I've heard talking to scientists, I've worked with a lot of scientists, they say they're closely related to snakes than more than other monitors. Um, they have a fourth tongue just like a snake does. Um, and they also found out recently that they thought that it was just like the Komodo dragon that the bacteria in their bite was um, you know, killing the animal. But it's actually, they found out that they might have a few venom glands in their top jaw and their jaws. So when they bite something, um, they're actually injecting venom as well. Um, so they get really big and once they get that big, they just trot around just like they own the place. They're not scared of anything. So. Um, another thing I would say is like if you ever come across a printing and um, people say run, yeah, run, but don't stand still, because they'll think you're a tree and tell you to run towards you and run up here. So you know, they've got very sharp claws as well, so, um, uh, and that, they brought their best camels, like trees from Afghan, and um, the ones that didn't survive were pushed off the ship, and um, once they got here, you know, they did really well. They came to the country, they marked out the country.